hello, hello, and welcome. This is Admiral's Academia. Uh, today's class will be on accessibility considerations for online spaces. Uh, if you can hear me and see me okay, uh, I'm just doing a quick check-in. Uh, if you could just send a message through our, our Twitch chat here or on the Nine Blades Discord, much appreciated. Uh, just other housekeeping things. We do have a 20 second delay. Uh, so whenever you do type to me, I will see it 20 seconds later. Uh, so I'll respond as soon as I do see it. Uh, okay. Everything looks good. Um, for those attending, um, the King has graciously allowed us to take credits for this event. Uh, so please, uh, go ahead onto the Nine Blades Discord in the, uh, Double checking, don't want to send you the wrong place. Nine Blade scheduled event uh, page of that Discord and sign yourself in for credit. Um, it uses the AMP bot like all the other Discords in AmpGuard, so uh, you just sign in how you normally do in your own kingdom. Okay, things looking good. I think we can start. Okay, if you have seen any of my classes before, it's the same sort of standard set up we do the who what when where and how so now that you know that you know the full structure of the class you can follow along as we go you can tell how much more there's left and how quickly we're going through things okay uh and we'll have these handy dandy slides right here uh so that you can follow along if you have questions at any point, please, please, please uh, feel free to send them through the Twitch chat here or on the Nine Blades Discord in the uh, Nine Blades scheduled event uh, channel. Okay, other than that, I think we will start. Okay, so who? Who is involved in this particular topic? Uh, we have the organizers of the events themselves, uh, moderators who will be monitoring the event, uh, the attendees, and then the attendees who need accommodations. Just keep moving right along. Uh, and what? What are we doing here? Um, accessibility. So um, this is going to come in multiple forms. Um, there are a plethora of uh, disorders and disabilities that require accessibility needs. Um, I'm going to give you some some of the very broad general topics um, that will that will cover multiple things um, but just please go in with the understanding that um, they're they're not going to cover everything there's going to be some things that have um, overlapping things some things are going to have very specific things um, that these are more of just things to be aware of um, just kind of knowing that uh, these are things that are out there that um, might be able to help multiple people if uh, if you just kind of have the forethought to know that that they exist. Um, so types of things, uh, text, right? Uh, for folks that have like learning disabilities and things of that nature, uh, dyslexia, um, text is going to be issues for them, right? Um, you're going to find that uh, in particular events or activities, they'll do particularly well with um, with voice chat, uh, but will not do well in a heavy text scenario, right? So if you're doing a quest, for instance, and um, you do it through voice chat, they're probably gonna do really well. But if you do the whole thing through text, they might not do so well. Um, visual, um, some folks are gonna have issues with visual things. Um, for instance, uh, there's a number of individuals in our community that are colorblind. Uh, if you have, let's say, if you have text in in a specific color, um, or you have a, a color coding system for something, and they're all in very specific colors, they may not be able to tell which ones um, to tell apart from the other. Uh, they may not be able to see, um, like there's certain colors that they're just not gonna be able to see, um, let alone differentiate between others. So um, you'll note in a lot of our discords, for instance, uh, the park names, right? Where everyone is placed in their parks. Um, a lot of times you'll see that they're according to the color of the park, um, but there's a lot of folks that can't actually see those. Uh, so they don't actually know um, 
what those signify, uh, for instance. So um, going around and, and finding the different types and which colors uh, are stand out better um, just for differentiation purposes uh, can be really, really helpful for individuals uh, that do have that type of accessibility need. Um, voice. So uh, quite the opposite from visual things. Um, there's some folks that will have uh, hearing issues, right? Uh, if you have any sort of uh, hearing aid, for instance, um, doing things with headphones is going to be not so good. Um, there's, I'm going to go back into sensory in just a sec. Um, so folks like that are going to do much better in things like text, but uh, may not be able to participate in a voice chat uh, thing at all. Um, so being aware that when you do have folks that are attending things, um, make sure that you're engaging with them in text uh, so that they, they can uh, participate in some format and um, they are being reached out to in interacting with. Uh, doop, doop, doop. What was sound? Um, nope, sorry, I mixed them up. That was her sound. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, voice. Uh, some folks have speech impediments. Um, some folks like might have a stutter or, or something to that nature and uh, feel very uncomfortable being in a voice chat. So another uh, thing that could have issues with voice chat um, where they may not be able to, to participate in that. Now, for folks like that, uh, they might be okay with listening in on voice chat and giving replies through text. Uh, so that's always an option. Um, so essentially having any type of thing where you have text and uh, voice chats available um, or even um, voice video and text, right? The combination of the three um, could be good because you can end up, okay, this person can't do this, but they can do this, but they can't do that, but they can do this, right? Um, and they can pick and choose and sort of um, there might be a thing in there that they can use. Um, I'll go a little bit on later on and how to basically uh, go about those particular accommodations. Um, okay, so sound I did before, voice, it's that. Um, sensory, okay. Um, sensory is a combination of things, um, but the general thing of it is um, we tend to refer to it as like sensory overload. It's basically um, too much input. Uh, it's something could be like uh, really bright or really loud or just noise. You're you're taking in too many sensations. Um, too many senses are being uh, triggered at the same time, and it can be extremely overwhelming. Um, so, uh, for instance. If you are on a voice chat and somebody has a hot mic and everything that they're doing in the background is being picked up on their mic well other people are talking you're hearing clicking of the keyboard you're hearing uh, a kid crying in the background you can hear somebody that just dropped um a bag of beads um on a hardwood floor right uh somebody then sends a, a gif through uh through text chat that is um the the hypno toad from uh, Futurama and all of a sudden whew, that's a lot to take in for folks that have sensory uh, sensory processing issues that's that's a lot and that's one of those okay stop take a break I cannot be around this um, so that's where moderators are are super super important and uh, huge huge savers um, when those types of things happen or to help prevent those things from happening. Uh, sorry, real quick, I'm just noticing that there is some text. Um, do, do, do. Uh, real quick, could you, if you don't mind, could you uh, type out what HOH is? I think I, I know what it is, but I want to make sure. Um, much appreciated. Hard if you, okay, perfect. Here it is. Okay. Um, so, ah, gosh. Um, 
I guess the like the biggest thing like um some folks don't particularly want others to know um that they have accessibility needs um it gets into this weird thing of even though there is no reason to be ashamed and there is no reason to uh to have to feel that you need to hide um there's still a lot of stigmas that go around um even in our community still, uh, with having uh, disabilities and disorders, um, it becomes a very, uh, like an insecurity thing, a very uncomfortable thing. Um, and no one should have to do that if they are not comfortable doing so. Um, I, I have so many disabilities and disorders. Um, I am legally disabled um, and I am just very outspoken about my things. Um, I'm very outspoken about my medical situations, um, but that's a choice that I've made. Um, it's still very uncomfortable for me and it still feels like, ooh, and I constantly have the thing of, oh gosh, people are going to treat me differently. They're, uh, either going to like pity me or, um, or act differently towards me in some way. Um, there's always that sort of nagging feeling in the back of your head. Um, so a lot of times it'll end up being this thing where, um, you just kind of want to feel more, uh, it's easier to like tell somebody that you trust. Um, and I'll kind of go in later about, uh, again, just who can help with those specific needs and, um, how those accommodations can be made. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, um, so yeah, it's just, sometimes it's just easier just not to, to label anything. Um, but I will explain, uh, later on. Uh, thanks. <laughs> um, how uh, how you can go about uh, with more of that anonymity while uh, getting that accessibility uh, covered. Um, also, just kind of going over these uh, in generally, um, when you have mods that are um, cognizant of uh, specific disorders and disabilities, um, they know specific things to kind of just go in, um, trying to cover across the board. Even if there's no one that comes in and has those, um, uh, or has any specific disability or disorder, um, present, that, um, there's folks that have, that don't have any, like, actual, um, disabilities or disorders that just don't do well or don't enjoy or dislike or have, you know, um, uncomfortable feelings towards specific things um to where these things can be helpful towards just regular um attendees in general um but there's there's general things where you can just try to moderate certain things um just to kind of blanket cover things um that you have a good feeling that will cover multiple things um, without having to specifically go, okay, anyone here? Mm, you? Do you have a thing? Right? Um, here you can avoid something like that. Okay, um, so let's go on to mental health. Uh, okay, this is a very big broad thing. Um, but in terms for online things, um, there's two very specific things um, that I particularly want to cover in this. Um, the, the two huge ones in our community is depression and anxiety. Um, what you're going to get from them is, is two different feelings. And there's lots of folks that have depression and anxiety. So, um, anxiety is going to be, um, more of this uncomfortable, overwhelming feeling, um, to where if they, they're in an online situation, um, and they're overwhelmed, if, um, if they're self-conscious about something, if, uh, if there's just too much happening, um, now this is like super, super generic. There's very specific, uh, anxiety disorders and very specific, um, responses and triggers to anxiety. Um, and everyone's going to have their own. Everyone is going to be very, very, uh, different things uh, that they're going to cover. Um, but there could be certain things right off the bat where um, they will be so concerned about triggering their anxiety that they will not even attempt to do um, an online activity, uh, depending on what it is, right? Um, 
right, I, I have an LD, I have a learning disability, um, and I have anxiety, and I have depression, I have so many things. Um, so, like, for me, all right, I have huge issues with text. Um, so, going into a thing knowing that an activity is going to be just text, right, um, basically almost all of our uh, AmpGuard interactions are on Facebook through text, right, uh, which is a nightmare for me. Um, but doing things just purely through text can be really, really rough on me. And if I'm feeling very overwhelmed that day, if I'm just got so much going, um, and all of a sudden I'm I'm feeling like super self-conscious and I I'm having a hard time focusing, um, I won't be able to participate in the thing. <coughs> Sometimes I'll be there and I'll be present, but I won't be actually like fully uh, interacting as I would normally would uh, under other circumstances. Um, so that's that's a thing. Um, they'll also not likely tell you that that's a thing. Um, you might also end up in certain situations where um, you'll they'll give an excuse of a thing uh, to sort of cover what's actually happening. Um, so when uh, when they say, oh yeah, no, do you know it's it's been a long day. I'm tired, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go now. Um, going to say, oh, but it's only this time. You have plenty of time. Just you can go to bed a couple hours later, right? Like when you press on them, that's just gonna make it worse. Like when somebody says they have to leave for whatever reason, um, bid them a fond farewell, thank them for coming, and and tell them you hope that they come out again. Um, don't press. Do not press. Um, because I mean, the majority of the time, yeah, it's going to be the thing, exactly the thing that they say that it, they are, um, leaving for. They might have no issue whatsoever and legit just need to actually go. Um, but there will be some folks that will give, uh, give reasons for, for leaving out early for a thing. Um, that is a cover for how they're feeling, that they are uncomfortable. Um, but they don't want to come right out and say, hi, I'm having a panic attack, so I'm going to leave. Right, um, that's very a cringy feeling to, to just be very open about that sort of topic. Um, so a lot of times if somebody's having a mental health issue at the moment and uh, they, they are triggered and not doing well, um, they will give a blanket random thing. Oh, I gotta take a phone call. Oh, I'm really tired. I really gotta, oh, I forgot I have to go do this chore. Um, right, I, there's a million things. Um, it's a uh, it's actually like a form of masking um masking is um a thing where you present as if you're fine and everything is okay but inside you are screaming into the void <laughs> um it's it's putting on a brave face for others um when you are struggling internally more or less um so depression is going to be a, a different experience from that um Depression will um, kind of manifest in, in a couple of ways, but what you'll see uh, particularly in, you know, online activities is going to be um, they're going to have a hard time with motivation um, that they're just shutting down, um, that they can't bring themselves to put on that mask, that the, the spoons um, that it will take to, to put on a brave face and, and when everyone asks, oh, how are you doing? And you give, oh, fine, thanks. Just like, sometimes you just can't answer that question. Sometimes you just have a long pause because you don't want to say how you're actually feeling. Um, there's, there's going to be points where being really sociable is going to be very, very, very difficult. Um, and I think... At a time like this, um, where a lot of folks are are isolated and um, their routine is drastically off, um, we don't have in-person amp guard uh, for the most part, um, and losing that, um, losing physical activity like that um, can cause issues uh, in that. Um, in that particular realm. Um, so we're seeing far more widespread depression um, and situal, 
uh, situational depression, things like that. Um, where when the pandemic is over, um, particular individuals will no longer have, um, um, they will no longer be affected by their depression. Um, some folks, it is uh, a chemical imbalance where uh, that is a like thing, that it's not just X thing is making you depressed, right? Um, you'll, you'll see that kind of form of thing when, um, when you lose somebody very close to you, right? Uh, and you sink into a, a depression. Um, but in time when you're able to cope with your, your feelings and um, grieve and um, sort of get through and past that moment and um, get yourself going back into to, um, your old routines and your own your old headspace, um, the the symptoms of the depression can alleviate, right? Um, but for folks that have um, like clinical depression um, and that have uh, very specific chemical imbalances um, that need to either be done uh, through through medicational uh, therapies um, as well as um, actually talking with a therapist and go, uh, figuring out coping skills and, and things like that. Um, Sorry, this is a very long, long thing. I'm getting a bit off topic, so I'll jump back a bit in. But uh, more or less, the biggest thing to understand is that um, mental health will be absolutely a thing uh, that folks that are um, running activities and moderating those activities will deal with, uh, whether they realize they are or not. Um, so that is definitely a thing. Um, I'm putting etc on there because, again, this is this is an infinite list. Um, there are so many uh, disabilities and disorders that exist, um, and we're not going to know all of them. We're, we're not going to know every single thing that we are going to face. Um, but going just through the list of, whoop, everything's weird on my screen, um, just the general categories of possible things that somebody could experience difficulties with in an online format um, can a lot of times help multiple things. So it's just more of things to keep in mind, if that helps. Um, again, if you have folks have any questions throughout this class, please, by all means, um, uh, tag me, I forgot to mention that before, uh, tag me in either the chat here on Twitch or on the Nine Blades, uh, Scheduled event. Sorry, I have to keep bubbling it up. I'm usually in a different place. Um, on that text channel, uh, I'm monitoring both right now, so I will be able to see your questions either way. Again, please remember that there is a 20 second delay, and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, I'll stop after every slide, basically, just to do a check-in to see if there's anything um, that folks need, uh, again, repeating, rephrasing, um, going a little deeper into, or any specific questions that you might have. Um, do, 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 do. I can see that Fubard is typing. <laughs> the Fubard, apologies. Um, Fubard, we had a conversation about this. I want to say almost 27 seconds <laughs> seconds back of the time minutes ago um oh oh that's very clever which one will appear on first twitch or discord Ooh, i didn't look up quick enough to see which one because you did on both um oh no now i'm distracted curious okay Okay, I just saw you say "bwahaha" on on Discord. <laughs> oh my gosh! Important notes on the Fubard. Uh, he comes to like all of my classes and makes me laugh every time. Um, <laughs> every time. Um, 
Okay, so that's a good question. Should there be a sort of uh, monarchy position for helping with accessibility? Um, so moderators specifically um, are, are really good individuals to use for that particular thing. Um, but otherwise, the monarch themselves is also a very good person to handle such things. Um, if there was somebody in particular that you were to uh, sort of um, make that particular individual for your kingdom, um, yeah, I don't see why not. Um, that would be pretty good, actually. Um, more or less, it's going to be uh, more of a thing of making sure that folks know who to talk to um, and then making sure that they're comfortable with talking to that individual. Um, so I'm, again, uh, I'm going to be covering this in the how section. So we got when and where, and then we're going to get into the how. So I will cover um, kind of more into how that works. Um, so I will, I will delve into that in just a moment. Um, but I, I will get to that. Okay. So um, quickly, we're going to get into the when. Um, again, this is pretty, pretty overall stuff um what what we're referring to when we say uh like online activities um this could be covering things like uh field um right now for um for the kingdom of nine blades we have uh something called featured park nights um so monday through friday uh we have two parks on each day and each park has a two hour slot so six to eight and then eight to ten um, and that is their field day for the week. So they can, um, do whatever activity they would like to with their time slot. And it, uh, gives them the opportunity to take a weekly credit. Um, and also for folks to be able to visit their online park, essentially, um, to participate in those activities and to, uh, connect with each other and, um, and stay together still right um that connection is really really important and has been a huge 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 help um the past couple of terms um in particular with this situation that we all find ourselves in right now um so that's why we have field on there um ans nights um those are some good standards that existed long before this pandemic um events in general right when people have mid rains and coronations um though they might be referred to as end rain or uh, some other variant uh, each kingdom sort of has their own particular culture of what they refer to those events so uh the events that everyone has that's uh three months apart <laughs> those ones um and that will again vary from each of the park levels will have their own events and then uh if you're in a kingdom the kingdom um or if you're in a principality um those will be uh those ones that you'll you'll see um classes panels amas this is the class we're doing right now um this is a good example of an online activity <laughs> um games so uh something that we've been doing a bunch something i've been seeing in a whole bunch of kingdoms um for our feature park nights some parks uh like to do like jackbox games or among us games or things of that nature um there's just so many options right now um and they're really good just like group bonding um things uh very good morale boosting just fun stuff um so games is a big thing that we're seeing right now. Uh, general hangouts. Um, again, we're seeing this with the feature park nights. Sometimes uh, there isn't like an officer available to run an activity, so it'll turn into just a general hangout. So folks will just be doing whatever in the background, right? They might be crafting. They might be um, they might be painting their wall. They might be you know uh, doing their math homework, right? Um, I've seen so many different so many different things. Um, but generally just um, hanging out, doing whatever, um, but just chatting with each other. Um, so that's a thing as well. And again, and putting that etc. because it's infinite amount of opportunities and possibilities. Um, it's just a matter of what folks are doing. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm seeing some text. Let me just check real quick. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I 
Then get the Foo Bard. Yes, Feature Park Nights is where the Foo Bard is always watching. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I do want to point out um, Dame Alana Tutri's message here. Uh, in her opinion, uh, people running events should do everything they can to make events uh, as accessible as possible and try to get it, it uh, towards ADA uh, or Canadian equivalent. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, quite honestly, that's kind of um, what I'm trying to present here with this class, I suppose. Um, there's, I think the biggest thing right now is just um, a lack of awareness, I'm going to say. Um, when, when folks don't know things um, are issues, then they can't do anything about it, right? Um, so kind of just having um, a heads up going, hey, so there are a lot of folks that have disability and disorders that are coming to online activities or specifically because of them aren't coming to online activities. Um, the more that you know, the more you can craft your activity um, and moderate your activity and find um, different forms of accessibility um, and different options for participation uh, so that you have the most accessible space that you can provide. Um, but I, I would agree with, uh, with Alana that um, if, if you're doing an event, um, you should do what you can to, to make it as accessible to, to all as, as you can. Um, but a lot of that is also going to be communication. Oh gosh, there's so much more, so much more. Uh, I'm going to get into all of that in the how. So we're so close, we're so close. Okay, so, okay. It's one slide and we're going to the how. We're going to get into the, to the big part of this section. Okay, so where, um, again, this is just a quick little thing. Um, we are doing things on so many different platforms. Um, and again, I've got that etc. at the end because these are just some of the things I've seen so far. But there is an infinite amount of things and we have no idea with uh, new technologies that are uh, being developed and um, testing out things here and there, uh, what we could see in the future or even before uh, this pandemic is over. Um, so th these are just general things that we're, we're seeing across uh, multiple kingdoms at this point um, as places that are... Um, are involved when dealing with online activities. Uh, so Discord is a huge one, for sure. Um, Facebook, that's where a lot of our uh, our groups and kingdoms landing pages, essentially, um, and, and kind of main form of communication for the most part, um, as well as our, our inter-kingdom COM. Uh, Zoom, Zoom, you'll see this a lot for, for events. Um, that's a big one. Uh, for, for us in the Nine Blades, um, we, most of our stuff is, is Discord. Uh, Twitch, things like this. We're doing Twitch right now. Um, which, again, you'll see a lot for classes um, and for things like um, folks streaming things, like uh, specific like uh, games and crafting, things like that. Um, this is a really good platform for that. Uh, Zulip. Um, I've only seen Zulip for uh, the Interkingdom COM, but I'm going to state that because it is something that we do for, for Anthguard. Um, and again, all right, that etc. Just plethora of options and opportunities. Um, but these are just the, the main list of things that I, that I myself have, have noticed across um, multiple kingdoms at this point. Oh, why? Why? Okay, so this is... This might seem... Very simple, but uh, some some folks don't really consider um, the importance of this. Um, inclusion and retention. Um, AmpGuard is for all of us, and if we specifically say for all of us except you, uh, then we are not an open, welcoming community. And uh, I don't think that's what this game is about or should be about. Um, so if it's for all of us, it should be for all of us. And we should do our darndest to make sure that that space is there for all of us. Um, and retention. If folks 
do not feel that they are a part of this community, if they do not have the tools uh, to be able to participate and to be here, uh, if they are actively pushed out of our community um, because it might have taken time or effort to include them, then they have no reason to stay and they will not stay. Um, during this time, we are losing a lot of players. Um, the interactions that we're having is getting smaller and smaller and um, we want to make sure that, that we have this family that we've created uh, when we get back out there. Uh, this, is, this is a time to stay connected. This is a time to um, remind each other what is important in this game, in this community. Um, and, and make sure we don't lose anyone on the way. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I mean, that's a fantastic point. Again, all, a lot of two trees. Um, I, let me see if I can do <coughs> cough. Um, inclusion agreement signed by all kingdoms. <coughs> um, Yep, we all agreed to do that, but here we are, not all doing that. So, um, hopefully, right, but with more education and more um, awareness of these things, um, my, my hope is that we can get closer to actually honoring those agreements. Okay, this is it. This is the big part. How? How does this all work? Now we know, okay, there are problems. Um, we have, we need to be fixing them. How do we do it? Okay, so, um, how part one? There are two parts, just to... Uh, and again, if folks have questions at any point, remember there are two slides, this one and one left uh, before all of the... Um, plan things are, are done. So if you do have questions, if there's anything you'd like me to repeat, rephrase, uh, go into a little deeper, uh, please go ahead and uh, type that in the, which one's which? The uh, Twitch chat here or in the Nine Blades scheduled events that you can't see off screen over here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so communication. Real quick, uh, hydration break, everyone, please. Take your your beverage of choice and make sure you are staying hydrated. Hydration is important at all times. Okay. Communication. It is important to get the word out. Um, it is important to be open and receptive and it's important to advocate. Um, Getting the word out, um, making sure folks know who to contact, who is the person that will be covering accessibility needs, um, making sure that folks know that there are folks specifically looking to give accessibility, um, alternatives, uh, for folks, um, just letting folks know the information. Um, Something I'm, I'm personally trying to get going, um, still trying to work out uh, the best way to, to navigate it, but um, specifically because we, for our featured park nights, um, we have so many online activities. Um, I am going to try to uh, sort of make a, a disclaimer post uh, whenever there's an activity uh, that's posted that I can um, give folks a heads up of what are, um, what are the things that they're going to encounter in those? Um, like, is it moderated? Uh, is it a thing where there is a single speaker and everyone else is muted? Uh, is it a, um, a high energy, um, multiple people talking at the same time? Um, something that's going to be really good for um, uh, extroverts, for instance, right? Um, 
or is it going to be an activity that will be uh, more geared introverts that can just pop in and out um, at their leisure and not have to particularly communicate with others? They can just um, listen in, um, leave whenever, um, they don't have to uh, have to be on camera or have to have their voice um, set up or anything or have to text or anything like that, uh, where they can be basically like a, a fly in the wall kind of thing. Um, whether a thing is on uh, primarily a voice chat, uh, chat or text chat, uh, things like that. Just um, so folks know what what's there. Because um, a lot of times what I'm seeing is uh, they don't know exactly what's gonna the activity will be like, and they'll just to avoid any uncomfortableness, they'll just won't attempt it at all. Um, but there are specific ones that, like, uh, folks would do really well in, or particularly would not do well in. Um, and just kind of having that heads up of, okay, what is this and what are you likely to see? Um, just so you don't get blindsided or you go, oh, actually, I can handle that. And that hopefully more people will want to uh, attempt to do these activities. So uh, that is one thing that I, I myself am going to try to do in the future. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, but communication is going to be everything. Um, being open and receptive. Um, if you are the person that will be helping to uh, communicate the needs of others, um, to help create alternative methods of participation um, that are geared towards somebody's uh, disability or uh, particular disorder, um, you need to be somebody that they trust. You need to be somebody that is discreet. Um, that somebody that um, that they can feel comfortable telling something that is a very uncomfortable thing. They they basically have to label themselves uh, for you to know to do a thing, um, and that again, right as we we mentioned before, can be a very uncomfortable uh, situation. So. Um, just be very delicate <laughs> be very delicate um when when you're that person uh have a good open ear um be very welcoming and uh find what works best for them and um make sure that they don't feel pressured or excluded um i think that's the best advice i can give on that um now advocate goes both ways um if you are the one advocating for others, um, make sure you're speaking up. Make sure you're, uh, especially if if you know that there's an event coming up and there is, there are no moderators, there is no um, person in particular that is uh, going to be giving these accessibility options, right? Um, if you watch this, now you know. Now you know that there are there are things that, that need to be advocated. There's going to be folks that are going to need... Uh, help with this. Um, they're going to need options. Um, so advocating for others, making sure that folks are getting looked after, um, that's an advocate. Um, and now on the other hand, um, it's important for you to advocate for yourself. If you are the one that needs um, these particular things, uh, it's going to be very, very, very important that you you let the person who would be taking care of such uh, needs know that you need help, that uh, that you are interested in participating, but you have these issues, um, in that you you need an alternate method or um, see what you can you can play around with with options of what's available, because um, there's there's a lot there's so many options. Um, but if they don't know, they can't do anything. Um, I think that's that's the biggest thing. Um, as event runners, the, the best thing we can do is try to cover a, a wide range of things. Um, but there's going to be there's going to be things that we're gonna miss um, just for, for lack of education on a matter. Um, and there's gonna be folks that will never even attempt it. Um, 
and it might be for a very small simple thing that was super easily fixed or there might already be an accessibility thing built into whatever you're doing um, that they don't realize is a thing and uh, they will talk themselves right out of it and you'll never know that they've done so. Um, so communication is, is, is the thing. Um, but the, the advocation part is going to be very important in that communication. Um, if you need something specific, uh, you gotta speak up. Um, if you need see something, say something. Um, I know it's scary. I know it's uncomfortable. I know, believe me, I know. Um, I, I've, I've been there. I've absolutely been there. Um, it's, it's hard to, to just be very open about your situation. Um, and it, it sucks labeling yourself. It does. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. It sucks. Um, but gosh, there's a lot of amazing understanding people in this game. And, um, for myself have been so immensely helpful. Um, I just like huge shout out to the moderators of, uh, of the kingdom of the nine blades. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Um, just making sure that, uh, gosh, it's hot mics. <laughs> hot mics um like there's there's a lot of things that that um that you guys are just keeping an eye on and making sure um and being there and being there to talk to 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 say hey i have an issue with this or i'm uncomfortable with this but i don't really know what to say is there do you know of another option i can do this like this by um it's it's very very good to have a group of moderators that you trust that you can talk to um, and, and know their stuff and are able to, to make accommodations for you. So that's a huge thing. Um, so what are those accommodations? Um, accommodations is going to be finding workable options. Um, again, it's, it's one of those things where, um, this is going to be very tailored to an individual and what their particular needs are. Um, and everyone's needs is going to be different from somebody else's, uh, for the most part, right? Uh, you might get lucky and have something that's going to work across the board, um, but there might be things that are contradictory to others. Um, there's, like, that's the that's the crazy thing. Um, there are a lot of accessibility things that will help this person, and by doing it this way, you will actually make it worse for this person. So it ends up being, here's the thing, and if it's like this, this person can't come. But if you adjust it to be this, then this person can't come. Um, so it's it's a toss up of what you're dealing with. Um, it's it can be very very difficult <laughs> um, to try to to try to juggle that. Um, but again, it's it's about figuring out um, what needs are are needing to be uh, met and what accommodations you can offer. Um, for instance, um, we do a lot of things on voice chat, um, which helps a plethora of individuals. Um, but there's a couple of individuals here and there, um, that we've come across that have, uh, hearing issues and cannot be on the voice chat. Uh, so in, and at the beginning they thought that, oh, it's on voice chat. I can't be here. Bye. Um, not realizing that just doing stuff through the text chat was totally perfectly acceptable. Um, and once they knew that now they're on there, um, every week. So, uh, it's, it's important though, to make sure that, um, you are cognizant that there's an individual there that's coming, um, on a day or time, uh, specifically to come and interact. Um, and that cannot interact through voice chat. So making sure that you are reading their texts, that you are replying to them, that you're um, having that back and forth so that they feel uh, connected and that they can be participating in that, in that way, right? Um, if you do have a class going and there's slides, right? Post the slides so they can follow along the slides at least, right? Um, just things like that. If, if you know that there are hearing issues, make sure that all the visual things are there. Uh, so that they can get something out of it, right? Because again, the alternative is they don't get to come at all. 
which is terrible. And there's Trey, right on cue, just always during my class. <laughs> Hi, buddy. This is the part of the class where I get super distracted and all of a sudden I'm just petting my cat. This is Trey, by the way. Hi, buddy. Huh? Maybe. Cats are weird. <laughs> okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah. So again, right, it's going to be a matter of knowing uh, what accommodations need to be met and then finding workable solutions. Talk with the person. Um, let them know what is available and allow them also to be part of that conversation of um, what they can do to find something that um, that works for them, right? Make sure that they're, they're pro part of um, the solution, right? Um, just check in tech stuff. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's just going to be a lot of just figuring out a way that they can participate, figuring out a way that they can be present and making sure that, uh, they have some way to have interaction. And again, for, for those that are running the event or, or moderating that event, um, them being aware of, um, or even, even if they don't need to know the, uh, what exactly is like the particular um, thing that they need to, to make an accommodation for. Just even knowing, hey, so we know there will be somebody in attendance that needs this um, accommodation. Just make sure the accommodation is present. Um, so that, that's the thing. Um, because it's, it's, it's going to be completely counterproductive if you make an accommodation and then you don't follow through, right? Um, if you tell somebody, oh, don't worry, you can just do it through text and and have them come on and then no one interacts through text, um, that's, that's where all of a sudden you lose trust um, and you lose the inclusivity and the retention there, they're not gonna come back. Um, I think that's also a, a thing that we're seeing is, um, Folks that attempted things when we were first starting off in the pandemic, um, before uh, we even really understood um, kind of what was possible, what our options were for, for just um, running things, really. Um, going on there with before, like, heavy moderation was... Um, was the thing where there there really weren't like full out moderator teams and and they didn't um, specifically have things to um, to really actively participate in like you know like using server mutes and things like that during classes so folks don't just like jump on in the middle of the class and just interrupt the whole class and go hey nerds what's up what are you guys doing right in the middle of somebody giving a presentation right. Um, or somebody coming on and not muting themselves and it's a hot mic and you hear them arguing with somebody in the background and they're dropping things right in the middle of a class, right? Um, stuff like that. Um, you're, you're seeing that now, right? Um, but if that was your experience when you first, uh, right, first came onto a Discord, um, knowing that like, okay, this is amp guard right now and it was a negative experience that was overstimulating. There was lots of noise and lots of chaos and everyone's talking over each other and some things are lagging and people don't even know they're talking over each other. Um, all these things, right, um, really soiled the, the experience for a lot of folks. Um, or it would be like we would only do X, Y, or Z um, and not even knowing the different things and how different um, AppGuard is, is being run now, um, and it varies from, from kingdom to kingdom, it varies park to park. Um, if you had one bad experience at the beginning, you don't know how much has changed now. Um, so getting that trust back is, is rough. 
and trying to communicate that there have been changes and things have improved and there's a lot more options now and there's a lot more um, in ways of um, accommodations um, that can be made it's very 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 different um, I've had I've had folks tell me um, that they didn't come on to do online stuff because uh, they couldn't handle just lots of people talking at the same time um, and it was just like they have no idea that we have things that are specifically where you have to be miked to, or uh, muted to be there and there's only one person ever speaking for a, like a two hour period there's one voice um, that that would be completely doable for them now um, but they don't know that's a thing so getting the word out there of how much has changed um, that can be hard because it's it's a, again a trust thing um, it's it's very very hard to put yourself um, out there when uh, it was a really really bad experience to try to just attempt it again is it's gonna be hard getting them back um, but it's something that we really need to try our best to do um, so that is slide one so this is the last thing um, and again this is going more into the the moderation part um, also, please, if you have any questions, again, this is our last slide. So once I finish this slide, um, that will be the extent of the class that is prepared. So we'll be open for any questions, any Q&A you want to do. Um, if you need me to repeat, rephrase, uh, go in a little bit deeper on anything that we have covered so far, or if there's something I haven't covered, um, please go ahead and uh, send a message through the Twitch chat or the, uh, the Nine Blades scheduled event. So sorry, I'm usually in the feature park night <laughs> for this, so this is like my first time being in the schedule event. Uh, so I keep on getting it mixed up, so my apologies. We are in the um, Nine Blades, it's, it's, it's 9B, it's like the number 9B scheduled event. Uh, and I can see here uh, that the food bar does have a question when we are at the end of this. Uh, noted, I will absolutely get to you. Um, Where do I think AmpGuard as a whole needs uh, most improvement? Um, oof, that's that's a hard one. Um, in in terms of accessibility stuff, um, I would say um, making sure. Um, I mean, the moderation part, oop, I'm on the wrong side. Uh, things that are moderated, I think is is pretty big. Um, I've I've gone to a lot of uh, different parks and kingdoms across Ampgard at this point, and um, I've noticed there's a bunch of things that have no moderators at all. Um, and it's a lot. <laughs> um, I, have, I have sensory stuff um, myself, right? Um, Folks will notice that I, I wear uh, these during my classes. Um, I have nothing to listen to. Uh, I don't actually use them to to hear anything. Uh, they're noise canceling. Um, I specifically uh, have these on while I'm teaching to block out all the noises around me because um, I can hear the ticking of the clock. I can hear the buzzing of the lights. I can hear random cars going by outside. I can hear dogs in cars opening and closing their doors and folks opening and closing their doors. I can hear the elevator going up and down. I can hear Trey going around the house doing whatever, um, right, uh, Tyler walking about. That's a lot while also trying to focus on teaching a thing. Um, so I use noise canceling uh, headphones that it's no sound, there's nothing um, that I'm trying to listen to. There's no person, there's no music or anything like that. Uh, it's just, it just uh, cancels out the noise around me. Right, uh, so this is one way that I'm able to do this. Um, but yeah, to answer the rest of it, uh, I would say just um, event runners understanding that there are accessibility needs um, and 
making sure that there are accommodate uh, accommodation options. Um, I think as a whole, um, and we see this uh, even in things that are are in person. Um, a lot of times, um, folks with disabilities and again disorders. Um, Finding ways for us to participate in accommodations uh, for us to still feel included in this game. Um, there's a lot of folks that treat it as a burden and an annoyance and a, a thing that they don't want to deal with. And a lot of times they don't deal with it. Um, feeling in like folks want you to exist here um, when, when you are disabled um, is, is rough. Uh, a lot of times you feel just very unwanted and you feel like a burden um, and it makes it so that you don't want people to know that you have uh, this or that because then they start treating you like a burden. Um, they start um, not letting you know when things are happening. Uh, they don't include you with things um, because they know that it will be extra effort for, for you to be able to participate. Um, so I would say generally as a whole, what I think um, this game needs improvement as um, is actually having an open, um, inclusive space for all of us, no matter what we are running. Um, that if this game is for all of us, it's got to be for all of us and um, not treating people lesser uh, because they have a disability or a disorder. Um, that's <laughs> yeah, that was a bit heavy. <laughs> um, there is another question. Um, I want to make a recommendation for a couple of things uh, when your slides are over. Okay, I will read that when the slides are over because I literally just wrote it now. Um, okay, I will absolutely get to that. So I'm going to just quickly get through this this slide. Uh, then we'll just have open conversation at that point um, and cover anything anything that you want to talk about. Okay, uh, so we'll go over the moderation. Um, <laughs> just being the lol now. Uh, I adore you. Being the Lana two trees. <laughs> Kelly, you're great, and I appreciate you coming. Okay, um, so moderation. Uh, the important things: creating a safe space. Um, if if they get there and you don't do your job as a moderator, um. They will not feel comfortable, they will not feel safe, and they will leave, and they will have no reason to come back. You've given them no reason. You've broken the trust, oof, it's gone. Um, right? This could even include, um, I'm going to say, uh, not safe for work content. Um, so that is included in text, in pictures, uh, and in conversation. Uh, and if you have uh, bard bots, in music um there are are some things that are like really sexual in nature that make people uncomfortable uh remember that this is a um this is a game where there's um younger individuals um so being able to to moderate that sort of thing we're, we're not all adults here um and even when there are adults uh there are folks that are uncomfortable with specific things like that um so making sure that they feel safe and comfortable in those spaces is important. Um, also, like if you have a Discord and you don't have uh, things that are safe for work and you're at work and you're like, oh man, I really want to connect with Amp Gardeners on my break. And you go, oh gosh, I just pulled that up on my work screen and everyone is now freaking out. Um, that would be bad. That's a thing to avoid. Um, steering conversation. Um, this is actually an interesting one. Um, that I think a lot of moderators don't know is a thing that they can do. Um, when you have um, something like that, if there is a topic that's not safe for work, um, you can steer the conversation and go, hey, oh, okay, guys, let's, let's talk about something else. Something else. Okay, let's move on to this now, right? Um, I, I usually try to, to um, start those things with, this is why we can't have nice things, moving on, right? Um, that's my go-to line for everything, um, but I do say that for other things as well. <laughs> um, 
I have a lot of catchphrases that I didn't realize were catchphrases and it's really amusing when everyone else starts saying them. It's just like, oh my gosh, I do say this random thing a lot. Um, I'm a very unusual individual that is, uh, I'm a silly person. <laughs> um, but also in a thing for steering conversation, um, when things end up um, in conversations that are like, only these couple of people um, can can be a part of this discussion, and there's all these people that, like, I don't, let's say you're talking about like a different LARP or a different game or something, um, and it's during a very clearly amp guard activity that like it's everyone's supposed to be there and doing something amp guard, um, and you're noticing all of these people are being left out and feel uncomfortable and you're noticing some of them are now leaving the chat, right? Um, again, as a moderator, you can steer the conversation. Uh, you can uh, go like, hey guys, right? Uh, if you wanna keep on talking about that, we've got all these different rooms that you can do that. But otherwise, if you wouldn't mind, if we could maybe uh, steer clear of these things and get back more onto this, or specifically having topics uh, to go over. Um, I remember I would have like um, like a set list of questions um, that I would have like in my notebook that were just like conversation starters that were amp guard related, um, just to get conversation going that was an amp guard direction when things would get like really off topic into like different games and things like that. Um, or really inside uh, stuff um, where where basically where folks feel excluded. There's gonna be times where like everyone in the group um, is in on a thing or is interested in a thing um, and those types of conversations are fine, right? Um, it's it's when you can clear that they clearly see that there is exclusion happening and that people are uncomfortable um, or feel that they're getting pushed out that you specifically, uh, want to step in and start gearing and moving. So steering is, is a really good way to do that. Um, understand and explain control options. Um, as a moderator, it's important for you to know uh, what you can do, right? Know the options of um, whatever the platform that you're using is. Um, and then being able to control it to others. No, sorry. Explain how to control it uh, for others. Um, if you don't know how to under uh, if you don't understand it you can't tell anyone else how to understand it um so that's important for moderators um so some things that are neat on discord for instance um server mute server mute is fantastic um and i i use quite often um but there's certain things to understand about it uh if you server mute somebody and they leave the the chat uh, when they come back, they're still server muted. Um, and if no one realizes that, they can't fix it. So it's important that, um, I'll give for instance, um, these are really good during Bardics, uh, so that people don't have hot mics or are singing along, um, perhaps out of key, but most certainly not in time, um, with the performer. Um, cause that's, that's an unfortunate thing, right? Um, there is a lag. So um, please know if you're running a Bardic and you're doing it like on Discord, um, if two people are singing from two different locations, um, it won't come out at the same time. It will be off and it will be um, really jarring to listen to. Um, and again, for those with sensory stuff, oof, it's really, really bad. It's really rough. Um, so it's gonna be really important that you have one person uh, performing or if you're doing a, a duet or a group of people that uh, it's coming from one place, right? Um, if you have, um, you know, a bunch of roommates, right? You have three roommates that are amp guarders at a Bardic, right? It's fine if they do a trio, uh, right? Cause they're all on the same mic and the same camera if they're on screen, right? Um, that's not gonna have any sort of lagging issues for others. Um, so what you can do during those is if somebody jumps on and you notice they're hot miking or start talking in the middle of a performance, you can you can hit that server mute uh, right away and it will it'll mute them. Um, but what you do is after the song is done, you unmute them, 
say, hey buddy, got a hot mic, would you mind muting or pushing, uh, moving to, to uh, uh, push talk, right? Um, right, if they do so, awesome, you're done. Um, if not, you gotta mute them for the next song. And then, right, uh, you tag them in chat, let them know what's going on. Um, and then after each song, you try, you know, try again. Unmute them, try to talk to them, mute them back up if needed. Um, but it takes somebody who's actively moderating. Um, here in the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, uh, we have some bardics that literally go till uh, the sun rises. Uh, dawn Patrol. <laughs> um, and oh gosh, it can be a very, very long time um, moderating. Um, I've moderated a lot of them, and uh, there is some that have actually made it to the sunrise moment. Uh, it is rough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, having to be super active with that, it's very, very hard. Um, have a team of people. Um, maybe take shifts or something like that. That, that can really help. Um, but otherwise, like making sure that there's somebody there that can help, right? Um, but knowing that that's an option. Um, when you're dealing with, uh, other things like somebody is, uh, streaming something or doing, like, um, like a, a screen share, um, sometimes you'll, you'll all of a sudden have random people, like, just, uh, speaking up going, I can't hear it, or, oh, it's too loud, um, you have to explain to them how to open up their settings in that it's a thing that they control on their own, um, thing right um if somebody says that somebody is too loud or too soft right the first thing you want to uh give them a heads up on is that they can control uh how loud or how soft um any of the people in voice chat uh you can individually put all of those settings yourself um so again it's important to make sure that folks know that those are options that are available to them um especially if like if there's, um, right, sensory stuff is a big one, um, any sort of hearing uh, issues, uh, making sure that they understand how to control those settings is going to be very important. Uh, so as a moderator, it's important that you can communicate to them um, that that is the thing and how to do it. Um, so, right, this is just a general understanding thing. Um, one super random side note. Um, for folks that do have um, hearing and sensory things, um, what something that I've found that has been particularly helpful for me is wearing headphones. Um, like I have like like earbuds, um, so when uh, there is a random thing where all of a sudden somebody pop on and it's um, a hot mic, I can quickly go like this and pop them out of my ears in a heartbeat. Um, much, much quicker than I can go press a button, go to this setting, adjust stuff, or or even as a moderator, go and, and mute them. Um, it's a way for me to immediately have action and it not be something that I'm hearing or getting triggered by. Um, it gives me a lot of control. Um, there's also times where uh, if, if things are, are too much, there's just... Uh, it, it, it can get like a lot, right? I'll, I'll type in BRB and I'll pop them off. Um, there's also a setting where, um, you can hit the headphones thing and it will, it will, um, instantly mute your, your headphones for you. Um, so that's something that I find helps for me. Um, I, I do everything on my phone. Um, so again, um, I'm able to to deal with uh, the visual aspect of sensory overload um, by, again, right, it's a small device, I can, I can flip the screen, I can put it over there, uh, I can also change the lighting on the screen, because um, I have a, a, a light issue in my left eye, um, so I need my screen to be at a specific uh, lighting, like, uh, dimness, so that it doesn't trigger for me. Um, it's actually why it's so important for me to, to teach with my hat on, um, because I have an overhead light and uh, I, I need this eye blocked from that light uh, or it gets really painful for me. And then what you guys don't know is right off here, I have my eye patch. Um, 
if it gets if it gets bad enough that because it's still light up there, right? I've still got the light. Um, all of the lights in my house um, actually are have um, color and um, dimming things. Um, so <laughs> I, this is like never the brightness in my home. <laughs> like this is just for these classes. So um, being able to to um, control the the light in my house is really important because it gets really really painful. Um, but yeah, if if it gets too much, I have I have my eye patch. Um, I actually have a set of these, but I need this one specifically to match this garb. Um, but yeah, I can just pop that on real quick. But I have everything right here within arm's reach that's just off screen. These are my secrets. <laughs> um, but also, if you're if you're doing um, some sort of online activity, especially if you have camera on, um, you can have all of your your medical devices or or medication or whatever um, your your particular thing is um, that's within arm's reach that is off camera, right? Like I have so much here, <laughs> just so much, um, but it's it's not visible, right? But it's within arm reach in case I'm, I end up in a situation where I need something very quickly, um, where I don't need to uh, get aid from my caretaker. Um, I can take care of everything that's in within reach of me so I can be uh, safe while I'm doing things. Um, so those are just random things. It's important for you to uh, know what works for you um, and that you are comfortable um, during any of these um, these activities, right? Um, it's it's going to be important that you know uh, any triggers. It's going to be important to know um, even what preferences. Um, if you know this or that is extremely stressful, very anxiety-inducing, or um, or any type of struggles or anything, anything um, having to do with um, your particular disabilities or disorders. Um, and, and this goes for folks that don't have disabilities or disorders either. Um, some folks just are uncomfortable with X, Y, and Z. And that's okay. That's completely okay. Um, a lot of this is just finding your comfort zone and making sure that you're comfortable will act, uh, will participating in activities. Um, so, I think I rambled a bit on that. Um, so, we'll, we'll quickly go over offline um, options. Um, this is going to be acceptance and understanding of the limitations. Um, this goes on, on two certain things. Um, yes, there is the you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink thing. Um, where you can set up all sorts of accommodations um, for whatever somebody needs. You have everything set up um, and they may still not be able to, to do it. They may not be able to bring themselves to do it. Um, it's it's going to be important that you are understanding and accepting of, of somebody's limitations. Um, what they, they can and cannot handle. Um, but other things that folks may not consider. Um, folks have, have real lives with real life jobs and real life relationships. Um, and, and school and a plethora of other things. Uh, family, everything. Um, and those things can um, at times conflict with uh, particular online activities. Um, so for one thing, if you're able to record stuff, uh, that's really, really good. Um, because they may not be able to be there live for whatever activity you're doing, um, but they might still be interested in it and still want to have that um, experience and, and um, to feel that kind of connection and just um, getting updated on, on stuff that's going on. And if it's recorded, they can go back and, and watch it later. And even if it's like a longer thing, like here, right, my classes go on forever, um, they can watch it in chunks, right? Um, I'll, I'll occasionally go back in and check out my own classes just to like, uh, to read um, what folks talk about in chat. Um, and also just to kind of uh, learn and, and, and see myself um, teaching and figure out if there's um, what ways to improve, different things to try in the future, right? Um, I'll go back and, and just go through stuff, but uh, I don't always 
uh, have enough time to just go through and, and sit through it through the whole thing. So I'll, I'll watch it in chunks as I go. Um, so that's always an option, right? Um, some things are going to be long and it doesn't mean that they have to, to do it all in one thing. Um, accessibility wise, right? Um, having a thing that's a long period of time, they might not be able to just sit through. It might just be just too much. Um, but having it recorded means that they can take it in chunks um, and take their time and, and uh, go at their own pace. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, otherwise, there, there's going to be other things where um, there, there's some folks that have like really debilitating anxiety um, where their social interaction is, is a no-go and uh, no matter what the thing is, even if it's just um, one person talking, um, even so much as popping on uh, to, to the voice chat where people see that you're there and all of a sudden go, oh, hey, this person's there, how you doing? Start, right? They may just be like, I don't want anyone to talk to me. I don't want to interact with anyone. I can't do it right now. Um, and they, they can't. They just, the thought of it um, is too much. Um, if they do not feel comfortable to, for doing a thing, do not pressure them. There is no situation at any point where you should pressure anyone into anything. No guilt trips, no pressuring, no telling them they have to do this, no telling them, oh, well, this accommodation is here, so you have no excuse to... No. <laughs> no. Um, do not pressure them. Um, do not put people on the spot that do not feel comfortable with that. Um, there... <sighs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, um, when folks ask me how I am, it's the most uncomfortable question. Because um, I, I have this thing where I, I like, I can't like just lie to somebody. Um, so like, if you hear just like a long pause, it's me going, I don't know what to tell them. I don't want to tell them how bad things are. I, I'm having a horrible pain day. Because um, a lot of times people will, will say, oh, hey, how you doing? Um, as like a normal conversational thing, like how's the weather? Um, but aren't expecting or wanting you to actually say how you're actually doing? Because then it's like a mood kill and an uncomfortable, like, okay. Now what do we talk about? And it's very uncomfortable. Um, so so asking folks that have um, chronic pain or chronic illness how they're doing is a very uncomfortable, irky thing um, that most folks just don't know about. Um, that's that's the thing. <laughs> um, and there's going to be folks where uh, they know that that's going to be the first thing that's going to happen when they pop on. And they go you know what? I cannot deal with that today. Uh, and they just don't show up. It might be an activity that they enjoy. It might be an activity that they can handle, but on that day, not happening. <laughs> um, it's gonna be important that you know that that's a limitation for them on that day and time. Um, for other folks, it might be just a straight across the board, cannot handle, cannot Cannot attempt. Not a thing. It is a, a, is a non-starter. Um, but these are still folks that are part of our community. And when you have, um, like, I don't know of any kingdoms, uh, that have actually suspended, um, like, attendance requirements. Um, so to be able to run for office, to vote on on all things and and for elections and all other plethora of things um it's important that folks have the way of an ability to sign in um to to get their their weekly credit so if you are doing so with um online activities um that's great that's wonderful um that's engaging and and fantastic but there's gonna be folks that can't um, so having some sort of offline option for them is going to be really important. Um, 
something that we've started um, here in the Nine Blades is uh, the offline credit program. So what we do is um, it's open for, for a week. You can post at any point. Um, you just do an amp guard activity. Um, you could you could do some pell work. Um, you could write a backstory for your character. Um, you could you could find somebody just to do private um, role play with, right? Um, crafting, right? Um, planning an event, designing a battle game, right? Anything really um, that can be in that genre of a vamp guard uh, that they can do. And then they just let us know what credit they want for the week, right? Orc name, park, uh, just say what, what activity you did and there's your credit. Um, there is no social interaction thing that they have to do. There's no um, sensory or any of that other stuff um, that comes along with, with stuff like, you know, uh, Discord or Zoom um, interactions. It's just our normal Facebook thing, right? They just say, I did this. This is my name. This is the credit I would like. And that's as much as they need to deal with. Um, but it's important to have that, that there is a thing um, that they can still get their um, their credit for the week um, and that they feel involved, that they, they know that they have done something um, that others are doing too, right? Um, that during this time, we are all coming together and still making sure that this game survives, that that we're still um, interested in this game, that we still want to participate in some manner um, and just try to do a thing for that week. Um, right, for, for us, um, it's, it's kind of like equating to um, the time commitment kind of thing of like for, for our Discord stuff where uh, you can't just sign your name and leave immediately and still get a credit for the week, right? Uh, you have to actually participate. Um, but you have to do it for a long period of time. I think that's also a common misconception. Um, you might only have X amount of time that you can, uh, that your spoons will allow. That might be 15 minutes. Um, the effort is there. You're trying, you're going, that's it. That's all you need. Um, you don't have to be there for the full two hours. You don't have to be there for the full six hours if there's something going on. Um, and I think that's the thing too, that folks go, this thing is going from this time to this time. I can't handle that. I cannot handle being there that whole time. Um, and they don't need to be right. Um, and that's also like a thing for, um, for folks that are doing, um, things like the offline credit program. Um, they don't need to be doing an activity that would be the same thing as going to a full, you know, four hour activity, right? Um, what they can handle. It's important to just what is within your limitations, how much you want to put towards it. Um, but equating to putting in an effort and trying a thing for however long that is, um, that's going to be an individual thing uh, to the person. So it's part of that accommodation is, is um, them being able to do something that's on in their own wheelhouse, um, in their own comfort level. level. So um, that pretty much covers that. Uh, at this point, we can go into questions. Um, the foobard, um, could you post what your question is at this point? Um, and I will start going down the list here. Um, the foobar. Will you admit you are a mimic? <laughs> Not a mimic. Mm. I say I don't think I am. <laughs> I hope I'm not. <laughs> yeah, see, see, Spooky's on it. 
uh, what most folks don't know is uh, Spooky and I are the same person, and I believe, uh, what was it, that we were both clones of somebody else? Yeah, that's, I think, I think that's what we, yeah, I, yep, yep, yeah, we're just clones. We just didn't know it till now. See? Who knew? Who didn't know? That's the thing. <laughs> Inside jokes. We're all crazy individuals. Okay, um, I'm gonna go over, uh, Demon Lama True Trees, uh, thing at this point. Oh, your slides are over. There, I'm on it. Okay, uh, Zoom now has a live transcribe, goodness, transcribe option for closed captions. And there is a free app for mobile users uh, that I found when researching for Zoom. Uh, it's called Live Transcribe. Uh, and you can use it to transcribe voice to text in real time. Uh, you can make the text really large. Um, that might be helpful for those hard of hearing. That's fantastic. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's very exciting. Yep. Um, for for those on phones, um, there's also accessibility um, options um, for for cool tools like that. Um, for folks that have issues with uh, reading text, um, you can do a thing where it will read the text out loud to you. Um, that's w what I primarily use. Um, also, uh, if you are, there's certain things also where you can, um, uh, instead of doing, um, text, you can, uh, there are things where you can, uh, record short messages, um, and post those. I've been doing that a whole lot. <laughs> um, anyone that's ever, uh, talked with me in, uh, Facebook Messenger, um, I, I end up using the, the voice um, thing a lot because um, that's a huge, huge thing that helps me. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of cool tech things um, that are out there and are even, there's more stuff coming um, and there's, it's, it's a whole lot of just figuring out what's out there. Um, gosh. I kind of want to make like a Facebook group where we can like find and share different uh, accessibility tools. Mm. Food for thought. Food for thought. Okay. Um, more proof that we are clones. <laughs> oh, it's freaky. Okay. Um, I appreciate the crap out of you and this class and your class. It's, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do, do, do. Questions. Uh, answer any questions. Do, do, do. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, so this is Q and A. If there are any questions uh, that folks have, um, please let me know. I'm now all caught up, I believe, on the text that is there. Uh, again, there's a 20 second delay, uh, so uh, as, as our normal tradition, as, as we've come to that point, the 20 second silly dance. Going to do a silly dance. 20 seconds is actually a really long time if you actually think about it. And it's really hard to go on for whole 20 seconds just to do a silly dance. And it's never 20 seconds. That's that's my my deep dark secret. It is never actually it's never actually 20 seconds. But you always end it with jazz hands. As for which Okay. Um Advocate House. Uh other than uh Spectral Dragons. Um There are um 
there's a bunch of random um facebook groups um there's there's things like house broken um there's there's stuff out there um but it's it's kind of a, a matter of navigating to figure out uh what things exist and uh what groups are open um for all to join in um yes house spectral Dra uh, dragon is specifically for autistic players uh and their advocates um yes yes i I, I'm on there. Uh, I do know what that is. Um, yeah, so basically it's um, it's a matter of finding them. Um, I'm not even aware of everything that exists out there. Um, I am on a whole bunch of random ones. Um, but yeah. Um, They're also, like, you might end up finding things that are specific to uh, specific parks or specific kingdoms. Um, you might find groups that are uh, AmpGuard-wide. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be cool if we could find, like, oh gosh, so many things I want to put on my to-do list now. Um, I think I'm going to make a post on um, like the main AmpGuard board and see if we can find... Um, Kind of just asking for a compilation of um, of groups uh, that folks can join, um, like Spectral Dragons, right? Um, like House Broken, um, for folks that have um, special needs that uh, could benefit from having groups that of um, folks that are allies and other um, individuals that are experiencing this same types of things in our game and um kind of exploring just the tools available right um the communities that exist and things like that i think would be cool um that would be amazing yes i'm, I'm all for it <laughs> definitely all for it um yeah i'm gonna go do that i'm gonna do that tonight i'm gonna put make the post um Thank you, folks in chat. You have inspired me to do a thing. Here, go do the thing. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Does anyone have anything uh, they they uh, like answered? Anything um, that I haven't covered? Uh, anything they need repeated or rephrased? Um, or would like me to go into a little bit more detail? Or anything like that um we'll be wrapping up shortly just want to make sure that i've gotten everything and want to make sure that i'm able to answer anything uh that you might have while i'm still here heart spooky thank you for that message um yeah more dance hands <laughs> uh <laughs> also remember to hydrate Always be hydrating. Hydration is good. Um, do, 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 do. Give that 20 seconds. Last call for any random thing you'd like me to go over. Yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do my hat down. Um. Just wanna make sure that I'm not gonna miss anything before we close up. Also, last call for, for attendance. If folks wanna get a credit um, for tonight before we close down the tracker. Again, it's on the Nine Blades scheduled event um, channel on the Nine Blades Discord. Um, we have gone for almost two hours now. Holy jeepers, you definitely earned it. So grab yourself a credit. Um, Okay. I think we're good. Uh, thank you again so very much, everyone, for coming out here tonight. Um, I appreciate so very much um, that when you guys come to these. It, it means the world to me. It really does. Um, 
appreciate you. I adore you all. You're wonderful. Um, if you have any questions in the future, if there's something that you realize later, um, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to me. Um, on Discord, I'm Admiral Ann Cash. On Facebook, I'm Amy Salvador. Um, yeah, other than that, um, thank you again for those that attended this, and uh, thank you for those that are watching the recording of this in the future. Um, take care of one another, take care of yourselves, and have yourself a fine evening.